We're going to walk through a simple uh, rigid body production example just to highlight the different areas you want to focus on when building your scenes for uh, rigid body simulation. Uh, one of the first things to think about and probably one of the most important things in getting a realistic simulation is to consider the scale of things. Because rigid body reacts to forces like gravity and wind, uh, you want to make sure the objects are built to the proper scale so when you end up simulating them, they look realistic. Uh, for example, an object that falls from two meters high will take twice as long to hit the ground as an object that's at one meter high. And that's very obvious in the real world, uh, but in 3D it's not so clear. So you want to make sure you set your scales properly so objects react in a realistic manner. And essentially it boils down to just deciding on a scale factor you're going to use and sticking to it. Uh, so for our example, what I'm going to decide is that one soft image unit here is equal to 10 centimeters in the real world. And we'll build everything according to that basic scale. So the example we're going to look at is building a simple catapult that uh, they used to use in the old days to launch rocks or fire at their enemy. Uh, and we're just going to do it because it looks cool, I guess. Um, so we decided uh, 10 centimeters equals one soft image unit. So based on that scale, um, if I want something 8 meters high, uh, I'll make it 80 soft image units. Since 80 soft image units times 10 centimeters is 800 centimeters, and of course 800 centimeters is equal to 8 meters. So we've got our catapult arm there. And what you want to do is just rotate it in position um, roughly where, where you actually want in the default pose. Uh, the next thing you want to do is get a cube that's going to be used as a counterweight to, uh, to pull the catapult down. So I'm going to set that to 10 units. So 10 times 10 centimeters is 100 centimeters. So that means that's a one cubic meter uh, sized object. And we'll just place that roughly where we want it. Now, the third component we want is just a passive rigid body object that's going to uh, be used as kind of the pivot point for the catapult arm. So I'll just go get a simple cylinder. And we're not too concerned about the scale for this guy because he's just passive and we're just going to be using it as an anchor for a hinge. So I'll just leave it at the size it is. And we just want to rotate it on that one axis there and translate it down uh, roughly in the position we want. And so now we're ready uh, to basically create our rigid body objects.